Hello. In this lesson, I'm going to analyze what are all the possible situations for intersection of lines. And we're going to discuss this separately in 2-space and 3-space, because we have more possibilities in the 3-space, which we're going to see in a moment. A first situation that I like to present to you is when two lines intersect in one single point. It's a very common way. In this case, as I represented it graphically, with that red point of intersection, you can analyze it in an algebraic form by solving the system of equations determined by the equations of both lines L1 and L2, regardless in what form they're going to be given to you. For example, if you have the equations in the scalar form, if you solve this system of equations, you're going to find only one solution. And it doesn't matter, for example, if you have the equations of the line given in the vectorial form, such as these, then you're still going to find only one solution, but this time you're going to find basically the two parameters S and T, for which, again, you're going to find only one solution that's going to satisfy both those expressions. So regardless of the format in which the equations of your lines are uh, being given to you, you can find only one solution. If the lines intersect in one point, like uh, I have it on this sketch, Another situation would be if the lines L1 and L2 are coincident. Well, in this case, you will have infinitely many solutions. When solving the system of equations determined by the equations of these two lines, you're going to end up with some solutions such as 0x equals 0 or 0y equals 0. So basically, for any value of uh, x, it's valid. So you have not just one solution or two or any value for x is going to satisfy this equation. So you're going to have infinitely many solutions and that's what it represents. The lines are coincident. Coincident meaning that they are actually on top of each other. I put them uh, with a little distance between them so you can uh, distinguish that there are two lines. But they are coincident meaning they are exactly on top of each other. The only other relation that you may have between two lines in uh, two space is that they are parallel. That means they never intersect. So if you solve the system of equations for, based on the equations of these two lines, it's going to result in no solution. Something of this form, 0x equals 7. So no value for x is going to satisfy that equation ever. Or 0y equals 5. So something of this form. You can never have a solution for something like that. Because the lines are parallel, they never intersect each other. Moving on to the three space. Basically in three space, we have the same situations like before, plus an additional one, which is not possible in two space. Again, if you have two lines intersecting in one point, you're going to have a solution. Solving the system of equation determined by the equations of these two lines, you're going to end up again with only one solution if the lines intersect in one point. If the lines are coincident, the system of equation based on the equations of these two lines is going to have infinitely many solutions just like before. And if the lines are parallel, like in this uh, sketch, L1 and L2, obviously they have no point in common, so the system of equation based on, their, um, based on the equations of the lines is going to have no solution. So these three situations are just like in two space, regardless if the vector equations are going to contain an extra z component. You solve them just like before, and you're going to have one solution for an intersection in one point or infinitely many solutions for coincident lines or no solution for parallel lines. As I said before, in three space, there is also a possibility for two lines to be non-parallel and yet they uh, don't intersect. That is possible for lines that don't lie in the same plane. This is specific for three space because in two space they are always in the same plane. So you can never encounter this situation. Obviously, since they don't intersect, they are not going to have any solution. Uh, these lines are called skew lines. So basically, these are all the possible relations between uh, two lines in two space or three space. There is one thing that you may be required to uh, analyze is to determine the distance between these two lines. So what I'm going to do next is present to you a way in which you're going to be able to determine the distance between two skew lines, we're going to determine a formula, basically, that we can use anytime we encounter two skew lines. 
and uh, keep in mind when I'm talking about the distance obviously I'm referring to the minimum distance if I have a point P1 on the first line L1 and another point P2 on the second line L2 this distance uh, P1, P2 or let's say the magnitude of the vector P1, P2 since we work with vectors and we know how to calculate something such as this it's easy to calculate using vectors but the only problem is that this is not the minimum distance between the two lines what would be the minimum distance between two lines well let's think for a moment if you want the minimum distance to a line to one single line from one point how do you determine that by finding the perpendicular to that line from your point so basically I'm looking for a line that's perpendicular on L1 but the same line it's also perpendicular on L2 in other words the minimum distance between L1 and L2 it's that line that unites them and is perpendicular on both L1 and L2 and how am I gonna determine something like that well why don't I just uh, sketch the direction vectors for each of these lines M1 and M2 put them nicely in the origin so we can uh, have a reference and also remember the definition of the cross product the cross product between two vectors resulted into a perpendicular vector on both those vectors remember so that's exactly how I'm going to determine a normal vector n which is going to be perpendicular on both m1 and m2 in other words perpendicular on the line l1 and perpendicular on line l2 so this n vector is going to be the cross product between m2 and m1 and we call this the normal vector for both lines l1 and l2 if I determine that this normal vector is perpendicular on both lines and I know my minimum distance has to be a line that's perpendicular on both lines then my minimum distance is going to be parallel to this normal vector so I'm going to sketch this as a visual aid so this segment AB or the vector AB therefore the minimum distance is we are only interested in the magnitude of this vector AB if you wish so this minimum distance let's call it D in short is this segment AB or in other words the magnitude of the vector AB but let's think for a moment what is this vector AB well this is nothing else than the projection of the vector P1 P2 on the normal N and as we know from the lesson about vector projections the formula was magnitude because we only care about the magnitude of this projection vector of p1 p2 dot product with n by the vector n and this is our minimum distance between these two lines l1 and l2 right it makes sense because if it's a projection on that normal n is going to have the same direction as n as the normal vector and that's exactly what we wanted to be perpendicular on both lines and it's going to also intersect this, uh, both these lines so it's going to give us exactly that minimum distance between the two lines so it's basically a projection of the distance between any two points that belong to those skew lines and that's how you determine the minimum distance between two skew lines hopefully this is going to help you a lot in solving problems where you need to analyze the relation between two lines and with this I'm going to conclude the lesson thanks for watching